was watching Al Wood's military modelling mayhem, which I'd highly recommend. Uh, and he's just done one of these. And my problem was that I just watched it moments before I went out to the shops. So consequently, we've got one of these. It's got a recommended desert uh, sort of version, camouflage and markings, which all looks very nice. And the three little men. This is a pretty old model. I remember making this as a very small kid because it's fairly easy. Um, and Al says it's from 1964. So uh, it's simple, straightforward, and of what well, is actually an unusual vehicle. I don't remember seeing this in any, book, in any books, so I will go and have a look while paint and glue dries. Um, but there it is. Basically an armoured car with the top cut off and uh, a nice big gun inserted. So, let's do uh, an undercoat. And then, oh no, let's have a look at the parts, bear with me. That's quick and easy for a change. Sandy colour. I seem to remember it coming in green originally. Uh, there we go. It all looks crisp and clean so far, doesn't it? Get it out of the bag, man. Right, for reasons of chaos that I won't go into, we're not even in the kitchen today. We're outside, thankfully. It's the first good weather we've had in about eight or nine years, I think. That's what it feels, feels like, anyway. And there's our first two bits. Three bits. <laughs> oh dear. So next, while that's drying, working on the gun. Here's the thing, go and have a look at Al Woods, Modelling Mayhem. Because he made a mistake, which I've made several times with this model. I made this when I was very young, then made it again somewhat later, thinking, huh, I did a rubbish job as a, as a tot. I can beat that and I didn't because the mistake we're all making is that we are believing the instructions even now see that that goes over there on the barrel which creates a very imbalanced gun it has to be said and it should be sitting about there because this is to the best of my knowledge, it's the standard 75mm that the Germans used. So that's what we're going to do. So thanks to me watching Owl's program on this, I'm not going to make that mistake for the first time in the history of me making this model. And I think this might be the fourth or fifth time. Oh dear. So, thank you Owl. We'll get it right, courtesy of your hard labour. So here we go. Glue at the ready. Get going. News flash. In fact, I've just noticed there are two tiny. So I can get next to sunset. Like right. you see, just the, the little notch there. It's not even a notch. It's a ridge. That's where the gun mantle has to go. There you go. There it is. Just showing up on that side. So the guide is there, I've never noticed it in 40 odd years. Oh. Uh, there's the hull coming together, a little bit of a squeeze to get everything in, I found I'd put the, the gun the wrong way round in the gun mount, so that was easy enough to flip round. So no real problems going there pretty smoothly really, if I concentrate. The outer shell of the hull in place now. It's a very um, spacious situation there, isn't it? But I remember that from when I was a kid. It seems very vulnerable. Anyway, that is none of my business. That 
that's the first side of it. Look, it's a bit messy, doesn't it? It doesn't look that bad in real life there, but might need a bit of cleaning up one way or the other. So that's the first uh, side of wheels going on. The wheels I'm going to end up doing is dusty, so they're going to probably have quite a lot of wash over them. But I'll get the whole thing done first and uh, see how they shape up. I need to get the other side on, otherwise the hit, the uh, the vehicle's going to scrape its belly on the ground. And there we go. We'll work that. So there it is, looking a bit like a a wheeled arachnid. Very sturdy looking. Looks like it's got some power to it. You can see why they were mounting bigger and bigger guns on this. But uh, slightly, there's a slightly botched quality to it, isn't there? Anyway, there we go so far. Almost done at this point. Or almost built, plenty of painting to do yet. Uh, just got the kind of wheel hub caps. Sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? But just got those to do. So this is us. I must have packed a punch, really, mustn't it? Move fast and hit hard. So uh, well done for improvising that one, guys. Here we are out in the North African desert, and um, this is pretty much it. A little bit of the last bits of paintwork to do. Uh, a bit of metal on the gun, and weather the wheels. So I'm going to use a very, very light beigey, sandy colour to make the, at least the wheels and the, the lower portions look rather dusty. So that's the plan. More than that, More than that I'm not really going to worry too much about. So I'm leaving the wheels a bit messy right now. And that will kind of do us. Oops. Now I've got to do the little figures. I'll do those for a change. Pop them in. So we're nearly there. Right, a bit of dust on the wheels, a bit of dust here and there generally, and the last few bits tidied up, and there we are. It's a funny little thing, but a nice simple model. Just got to do the figures, and we'll be there. I slightly yellowed up some of the bits of wheel, the hub wheel hubs and uh, I think that's it for this so figures to go it is small isn't it <laughs> I know this smaller I've done smaller let's get a bit of perspective on it that's not a bad vehicle for um, reconnaissance guys is it So we've got to do the green spots. Uh, let's do it precisely as it's supposed to be done, that's the thing. So camouflage to do, although I'm liking it as it is, its surface colours are great. But anyway, let's do it for once. My decision making with the Sparviero, Sparviero was uh, farcical, so stick to the instructions man. Right, some specky camouflage on. Uh, oh, I've just noticed. I've got the exhaust pointing up instead of down. What a twit. That's a cognitive thing, because I was kind of holding the, the hull upside down when I put them on. Oh, never mind. I'm sure I can change that. Anyway, here we are with the specky green camouflage and a little bit more dust covering over the top. Uh, oh look, the gun works as well. Works. What am I about? The gun goes up and down. Um, ooh. No, 
not intentional. Might, <laughs> might need a drop of glue, might it? Was that on? Could I? It's so bright I can't see through the phone whether I was actually showing the vehicle or not. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Of course I got the gun to move when I was a kid. This is just a fluke at the moment. And what else can we say? Oh, when I was a kid I got three of the eight wheels to rotate. I have none of them rotating right now. But there we go. That's the modern world. That's being a, that's being a grown up, isn't it? Anyway, there we go. So far so good. So we're on to the figures, and I just got my knife out to chop that giant disc, that moulding casting remnant off this fella, when I thought, nah, that's a piece of history that is, I'm leaving it on, so I'm going to. It's not beautiful, it could be a very old fashioned water uh, flask but one way or the other I just can't do it also look at that dimple in his back that doesn't look that doesn't look as deep in uh, reality that seems to be a, a leftover of um, I just had a look not through the camera that seems to be a left a uh, oh, shadow trigger the light that disc is massive and it's staying because that's the olden days not even nostalgia here we're talking real uh, historical monuments I'm quite tired at the moment I'll shut up now but with the kind of irony that only nature can do here we are with it all complete, and uh, the weather's turned abysmal. So not only would it not look like it was in Africa unless it was very stormy, which does happen, but this thing was going to get blown away because it's so small and light. We've had enough of that joke. Uh, also, the sound is terrible on this phone, isn't it? It's a lot of crackling and stuff. It'll get worse in a second, so I apologise for that beforehand. I will go and... Uh, have a look on the internet tomorrow to see if I can find a new camera. Promises, promises. Well, there it is done. Um, and jolly good fun it was too. I've done the fellas. Uh, from what I remember, when I was looking into the Africa Corps a long time ago, uh, generally, out in the hotter climes, your uniforms faded pretty rapidly. And... Uh, Depending on, you know, the individual circumstances, various bits of your kit faded at different times to others. I could go all the way upstairs and get the Osprey book, which I think is called Rommel's Africa Corps, and do a bit of reading. But open all hours is on, so uh, I'll do this and I'll watch that. There it is. Um, it really is a proper blast from the past. This, as I said, this is beyond nostalgia now. You keep delving into historic territory, uh, which is, as usual, part of the magnificence of a nice early model, be it airfix or otherwise. Um, so yeah, really enjoyable stuff. It is one of those ones, if you're going to try and uh, get a beginner hooked, this is one of those you really need to to uh, you know put in front of them and get them working on. There are no real problems. Everything goes pretty smoothly. And uh, there are no horrifically tiddly parts, apart from the exhaust pipes, which I forgot to switch over. I will do it shortly. Um, there were some pretty big seams on the tyres, and I noticed that actually there aren't. There are some very small seams on the tyres from the mould, but I noticed looking back at the last bit of film that uh, they showed up enormous because they're blown up on the screen. So I filed them down and put a bit of 
dusty colouring over the top. Um, and that's sort of, that's it done. So nice one. That will teach me to go looking at Owl Woods YouTube channel, won't it? End up doing things like this when you when you're meant to be doing other stuff. So there we are. Hope you enjoyed it. Nice and simple, um, straightforward, and I've done it according to the plan for a change. Remarkable. So more soon. Thanks for watching. Come back again. Go on. I'll be doing all sorts. So here we go, we're off. Oh yeah, all of these uh, little bits of landscape are by Amira Models and somebody mentioned them in the comments the other day. Uh, and I've got a bunch of these and I'm slowly working on them while I do other bits and pieces. They are brilliant, they fire my imagination. Um, and if you, obviously I'm just piling these together to create a little vignette but if you're doing anything from wargaming to dioramas, uh, these, are, these are the brilliant base. So I highly recommend them.